Hello, so today I wanted to talk to you about the metal tin and the investment case for tin. Tin prices are at 10 year highs, at highs not seen since 2011, and the metal we associate with cans and pan alleys is essential to the rapidly expanding global electronics industry, to semiconductors, the rollout of 5G, the Internet of Things. It's a key ingredient of the substance that binds together circuit boards and wiring, otherwise known as solder. 50% of annual tin demand is for this role as the glue of metals, as it's known. And demand has been strong for several reasons. With COVID-19 and the rise of remote working, many people have been upgrading the electronics in their homes, their computers, their TVs, their kitchen appliances. On top of this, House building, especially in the States, has been another driver. There's been this exodus from cities to the suburbs and that's led to a building boom. And residential homes, especially those in the suburbs, are often covered in a plastic cladding which uses a tin-based stabiliser to prevent degradation in the sunlight. Now, some of these drivers may seem temporary, but they're not. Semiconductors, the rollout of 5G, the Internet of Things, the rise of electric vehicles, these all mean increased tin demand, sustained increases. And then there's its traditional use in tin plating and copper alloys, plus exciting future tech, solar PV, thermoelectric materials, hydrogen generation, fuel cells and carbon capture catalysts. Meanwhile, the supply side has been hit. There's been 10 years of bear market, which means a lack of investment, lack of new discoveries and a shortage of mine supply. But the world typically consumes about um, 350,000 tin, uh, 350,000 tons of tin every year. The biggest producer is China, 85,000 tons, followed by Indonesia, 80,000 tons, and Myanmar, 54,000 tons. And then there's quite a big jump to South America, Peru, Bolivia, Brazil, uh, where annual production is about uh, 18,000 tons. Now, despite being the world's largest tin producer, China's actually a net importer. And many of its smelters and plants are seeing production cuts or closure. And so China's been stockpiling to meet its goal of self-sufficiency in semiconductors. Indonesian production, meanwhile, has been beset with problems. Around the third of the country's tin is mined offshore. However, in the monsoon season, the waves can get too high for the dredges to operate without risking damage, and so output falls. And this year, the weather's been particularly bad, I'm told by um, James Willoughby of the International Tin Association. And this bad weather's also gone on for longer than anticipated. Meanwhile, there's been a shortage of shipping containers, and that's led to delayed deliveries, and overall Indonesian supply is down by 40%. Myanmar has been beset with political problems, leading to supply falls. Latin American production has run into COVID-19. If it's not one thing, it's something else. And on top of that, no matter where the tin comes from, about 40% of global production comes from the unreliable source that's small-scale mining, artisanal mining and so on. In short, the supply side has been hit and stockpiles on the London Metals Exchange, the LME, where most of the world's tin is traded, are at record lows. LME inventories today stand at little more than two days of global consumption. In Shanghai, inventories are slightly higher but also off-exchange inventory is also thought to be near extreme lows. It's one of those classic commodity supply demand squeezes and the result is higher prices. And today the tin price is $27,000 per tonne. It touched $30,000 $30, last month. It corrected sharply with the bond market tantrum, and but it's stabilised at near all-time highs. And demand is such, in fact, prices have quickly rebounded. And the all-time high was at the peak of the commodities bull market in 2011, and that was $32,000 a tonne. Now, as COVID-19, or if it becomes a thing of the past, some of the demand drivers might fade. People might stop spending on home electronics, for example, and instead spend on, I don't know, holidays. 
but tin demand as the world decarbonises and electrifies should still remain. And there's something of a structural deficit in supply. Back in 2006, there was an environmental analyst called Lester Brown, and he said we would run out of mineable tin by 2026. And some might say Brown's forecast is coming good. And I'm not a great one myself for peak commodity theories. Higher prices usually sort of mark it out, and that's what we're seeing. Higher prices mean uneconomic mines can be brought back into production and scrap tin and recycling and secondary production, they all become more profitable and that tends to sort out the supply issue. We've been here before. I can remember many of the same arguments floating about about tin in the sort of 2009 to 2011 time frame. And then tin went into a bear market that by 2015 saw the metal lose half its value. But... Nevertheless, when one of these niche commodities starts to spike, and we've seen it before with uranium, cobalt, lithium, potash, graphite, helium, there's a real possibility to make good money because there's just such a short supply, such a little small supply and so few ways to play it. So it's true that the squeeze won't last forever. Tins are metal and metal prices are cyclical. And I, this isn't the low either. The low was in 2019 when it retested that $15,000 per tonne mark. But I would argue that it's not the high either. And the bull market has got quite a lot further to go. Um, tin was one of the first metals that human beings ever used. So much so that it even had its own day, Thursday. And, and the planet Jupiter is associated with tin. It's one of the metals of antiquity. And we were using it in the Bronze Age um, some 3,000 years ago. And so I rather suspect that despite the predictions of Lester Brown, tin is not yet making its last cry. It's just, this is just an old school bull market. So how to invest in tin? The storage logistics mean that buying physical metal, it's just not an option. ETFs, exchange traded funds are few and far between. Most spread betting companies don't give tin as, as one of their options. Wisdom Tree does do an ex exchange traded commodity, an ETC, uh, a tin one, and that tracks the Bloomberg tin sub-index. But the easiest option is just to go and buy an old school mining company. Now, <laughs> if you want my picks, um, take a look at the piece I wrote for the for Money Week last week. I'll put a link in, in the description. Um, but I'll, I'll also outline them here now. Um, now, remember, I'm about to mention some mining companies. And if you're not an experienced investor, I <laughs> recommend that you don't put anything more than play money to work. There's a lot that can go wrong with mining. And, you know, take some professional advice if you're not an experienced investor. Nevertheless, pure tin plays are in short supply. Um, one example of a company trying to bring closed mines back into production is Cornish Metals. That's trades, that's C-U-S-N on AIM. It's exploring and developing um, and looking to reopen two old Cornish mines, including the famous South Crofty mine, which closed in 1988 after 400 years of continuous production. Now, Cornish Metals has been quite popular, but I have to say, as someone who loves Cornwall, as a Cornwall file, I'm not sure how amenable the environmentally conscious powers that be there will be to the reopening of its tin mines, despite the progress that Cornish Metals may now be making. I'm happy to be corrected on that, by the way. Um, and in any case, that doesn't mean there isn't necessarily a shorter term play to be had. But, and it, but it should also be noted that Cornish tin mines actually going back into production, which is still a few years ago away, even if those companies get their permits, that's often a sign that the market is topping. And South Crofty reopening has been one of those stories that's been about to happen, but never does. I mean, I don't know how many times that story's come around. Um, if you want a successfully producing mine, consider the Canada-listed Alpha Min on, uh, that's AFM in Canada. Its market cap is around 700 million Canadian dollars. It has a low cost, profitably, profitably producing mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, if that particular jurisdiction doesn't appeal to you, I wouldn't be surprised, but the mine is currently producing well. It could probably roll back its shares. It's a bit... Um, and as for a penny stock that could make your investment go up 
many times or you could lose everything, consider AfriTin ATM on AIM. In addition to TIN projects in South Africa, it's in the course of bringing the UIS project in Namibia, one of the world's largest open cast tin mines, or it was. It's trying to bring that, bringing that back into production. In fact, about a fortnight ago, it announced, and I quote, tin production concentrates um, totaled um, almost 200 tonnes for the fourth quarter, representing a 28% quarterly increase compared with the previous quarter and exceeding the 180 tonnes uh, production target. And total production um, for the financial year amounted to 473 tonnes of tin concentrate. So it's it's doing OK, so far so good. Although I'm currently being trolled on Twitter by a chap called um, uh, Pamplona Trader, Trader Pamplona, who's let's face it, got greater mining knowledge than I do. And he says the mine can't work because it's too dependent on lithium and tantalum byproduct to be economic. But my view is that higher tin prices will solve that. But that's a market. You express your opinion with your investment and then the price tells you who's right. But the golden rule of AIM speculative mining plays is stay around for a good time, but not necessarily a long time. So that's tin. As I say, if you want to know more, hit the link to that uh, Money Week article. I'll put it in the comments section. This is not investment advice. It's just an expression of my opinion. With AIM, penny stocks, a lot can go wrong. You have been warned. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, cheerio.